Welcome to this video on parametric equations and projectile motion. This should help you with your studies uh, to describe motion with parametric equations. The initial conditions of a projectile can be viewed as a right triangle. So let's say that this vector here describes the motion of our projectile. I can turn that into a right triangle by dropping a vertical line down from the end of the vector and then connecting that with another side from the beginning of the vector to create a right triangle. Each side of the triangle then describes the motion of the projectile in both the x and in the y directions. Let us just also describe this projectile with a directional angle called theta. All right. So this right here, this is theta. And a velocity with a magnitude of v. So here we have our initial motion. We're going to describe it with an angle, theta. And we measure that angle to the horizontal plane here. And we will have a magnitude for this motion of a velocity v. Okay, so we make a v there. Then we can view the initial conditions of this motion as a right triangle with these components. We have an angle. We have the magnitude of the motion. How fast is it going? And we have the horizontal measurement of that magnitude and the vertical component of that magnitude. So let's, let's take a look here. If I was to describe each part of this then, I could say that the cosine of this angle, if you remember our good old friend Sokotoa, the cosine is described as the adjacent side over the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So that would be the x component over the v component. x over v, also known as adjacent over hypotenuse. Sine of the angle can be looked at as the opposite over the hypotenuse, or y over v. So now we've related this angle and the magnitude to each side of the right triangle. So we're going to use this relationship now to find the initial velocity in the horizontal and vertical directions. Okay, so if I want to know how fast something is moving horizontally compared to how fast it's moving vertically, I can use those previously determined relationships. I can get the x component or the horizontal component by itself real easily if I multiply both sides by v. This undoes dividing the x by v, so it leaves me with v times the cosine of theta is equal to x. Similarly, I can find the y component by multiplying both sides by v, and I get v times the sine of theta is equal to y. So I now have a way to quickly find the horizontal and vertical components of a projectile based on the angle and the magnitude of its velocity. Find the initial horizontal and vertical velocities for an object traveling at 50 feet per second at 30 degrees. Okay, so let's fill in our right triangle. The V, the magnitude, is 50 feet per second. And this angle, theta, is equal to 30 degrees. I want to find the initial horizontal, the x part, and vertical components for this y. Just going back to what we did on the previous slide, we said that the cosine of theta, which is 30, 
is equal to x over v, which is 50 in this case, or 50 times the cosine of 30 is equal to x. Similarly, we can have the sine of 30 is equal to y over 50, or 50 times the sine of 30 is equal to y. Now, we're going to use our graphing calculators or other calculator application, maybe on your iPad or on your phone or something, to find these values. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on my graphing calculator. Now, I need to make sure that my calculator knows I'm working with degrees. There's another common angle measurement called radians that our calculators might be set to work with. So let's make sure that we're set to work with degrees. So I'm going to go into my mode menu and sure enough my calculator is set to work on radians so I'm going to move down and switch over to degrees. Depending on the calculator that you're using the method for switching over to degrees might be a little different like a scientific calculator you might just have a little notation that says RAD or DEG depending if it's in radians or degrees You'll need to figure out how to switch that over to degrees if it's not already. Uh, so now I'll get out of here and I can just type in 50 times the cosine of 30. That comes out to 43.3. So 43.3 approximately. And don't forget your units. Feet per second is how fast it's traveling horizontally. And then vertically, we have 50 times the sine of 30, which comes out to 25. So we get 25 feet per second in the y direction. So this is traveling much faster horizontally than it is vertically. OK. So let's, uh, let's keep moving forward here. How far has that object traveled horizontally after two seconds? So if you're thinking about this as maybe a football that was kicked, how far down the field has it traveled after two seconds? Well, I'm going to take this horizontal component, this horizontal speed, right here, that's this part. It's telling me how fast it's going this way. And multiply it by how long it's traveling, so by two seconds. So 43.3 times two seconds. 43.3 feet per second multiplied by two seconds. So that would give me 86.6 .6 feet. And that's in the x direction. That's how far it's gone. So what, what did I do? I took the magnitude of the velocity in the x direction and multiplied it by time. Okay. How far up is the object at two seconds? Well, I would take that vertical component, my 25 feet per second, right here, that's how fast it's going up and multiply that by the time. So 25 multiplied by 2. OK, so 25 feet per second multiplied by 2 seconds gives me 50 feet up. OK, cool. So the horizontal and vertical components can generically be modeled by these equations. It was this part was what we got all the way back here, okay, actually even further back, that was, that was this. But then to answer this question about how far it had gone, we took that horizontal component, the v times the cosine of theta, okay, that's what this was, v times the cosine of theta, v times the cosine of theta and multiplied it by the time. Now standard wise we often write the time part first. 
Now, similarly, we can also do that for the vertical part. However, in the real world, we are often have to account for the effects of gravity, at least here on Earth. And so this portion of the equation right here, minus 0 0.5 times 32 times t squared, will account for the effects of gravity. So this part is causing the object to travel up, and this part is pulling it back down. Thus, we're subtracting it off of there. Okay? Don't forget this t is squared. It, the font typesetting turned out strange here, but that is t squared. Okay, so with that being the case, let's work a whole problem. This one says, find the vertical and horizontal positions for a projectile with initial conditions of 100 feet per second at 60 degrees after 3 seconds. Let's start with drawing a triangle, okay? Draw my right triangle, and it says that we are going 100 feet per second at 60 degrees. And so I need to find my horizontal and my vertical components. And we want to know at three seconds how far it's gone. Okay, we're going to use the shortcut of these equations here. So my x, how far I've gone in the x, is the time multiplied by the velocity times the cosine of the angle. So the x comport portion, how far it's gone there, is time multiply by the velocity times the cosine of our angle theta. So the x part will be 3 seconds multiplied by 100 times the cosine of 60. Okay, my calculator should still be set in degrees. It should hold that. So I'll do 3 times 100 times the cosine of 60, that gives me 150. x equals 150 feet. That's how far it's gone horizontally in the x direction. It's gone 150 feet that way. How about vertically? So y is equal to, this equation got a little bit more complex, it's t times v times the sine of the angle minus, here's that gravity part, 0 0.5, and we've got 32 times t squared, times 32, and that 32 is actually feet per second squared, the units on there, t squared. All right, so y is equal to 3 seconds multiplied by 100, times the sine of 60 minus 0 0.5 times 32 times uh, 3 squared. So y equals, go to my calculator, 3 times 100 times the sine of 60. I'm going to be careful to close those parentheses so that it doesn't affect my angle. Otherwise, uh, we might end up with an angle other than 60 there. Minus 0 0.5 times 32. Some people just use a shortcut of 16 there, and that's okay. Times 3 squared. Uh-oh. Negative 118 about. Negative 118. So this is actually... The, the motion of this, if you're imagining, here is where we kicked or launched this projectile. It went up like this and then actually ended up coming down at three seconds. It's actually below where it started, negative 118 uh, feet. So it's, it's below where it started by 118 feet that way, maybe off the edge of a cliff or something. So there is a brief introduction to parametric equations with projectile motion. I hope this might help your studies in your math class or even a physics class. Uh, good luck and have fun.